I've definitely made some choices that I'm not proud of in my life. But um, so I tend to dwell on that a lot. And that competes for my my heart and my headspace to be like, yeah, you know what? I am chosen. And, and even though I made some bad decisions or some things I'm not proud of, um, that doesn't, that doesn't make me any less qualified. That doesn't mean that doesn't make me any less chosen. Um, I always think of when I was a kid, um, I got picked last a lot because I was big. I was still kind of am, but I'm going to the gym today, tonight. <laughs> um, so I got picked last a lot. Mm. So, that has been for me a something that I've battled with even as an adult, like being picked, being overlooked. I always felt like I had something to offer, but because I was big, they didn't, I was always the last one chosen for sports or whatever. Um, and I can say that, you know, as I've gotten older, yes, you learn to battle it, but I'd be lying if there isn't, you know, sometimes where that creeps in and and I battle with, well, am I really chosen? Or more people are more chosen than I am. Mm. I don't know if we've ever had that, you know, like, uh, well, this person, God chose this person because of whatever, you know. They There's had, more favor over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I am, man, I, I battle with that, yeah. you know. I think for sure the voices around us are very loud. Um, you know, you, you take into account social media alone. You know, everyone is trying to sell us something. Yeah. And, and it doesn't come across as a product always. It's a way to be, it's a certain pounds on the scale. It's a fashion. There's so many different ways in which we can take on these different pressures of identity. And I think it takes a level of discipline to know when we need to shut them out and when we need to maybe delete our Instagram for a season or, or really um, narrow down the voices that we're listening to and that we hear. And oftentimes it's just so normalized now, you know, it's normalized for us just to scroll and listen and get sucked in here and there. Um, but when we know that we're having a hard time believing we are, maybe that's your sign to narrow down the voices that you're listening to. I think busyness is probably the, the most um, prevalent enemy of the suburban spiritual life we're so busy um we have so many things to do so many things to accomplish we're thinking about so many things we have so many pickups and drop-offs that being with god requires us to quiet our minds and sometimes quiet our bodies uh, to pay attention for a moment to the fact that God is near, that he's with us. Um, John Mark talks about the enemy of busyness in a couple of his books, and um, I think he's right. I think he is right. For me, certainly busyness, certainly overwhelm. Sometimes I get lost in a task. I want to do a great job at a certain thing or... Um, I'm feeling pressure and I just want to do a good job and that stuff, not wrong, it just can take the place of me paying attention to the presence of God in my life. Yeah. One way recently, I think it was last week I was sitting down and I was journaling and I just was asking Jesus, what's one way I can obey you better? It's one day that I, one way that I can walk in obedience to you better. And, and this idea of like, I'm right here in this moment and I feel so encouraged and I feel ready to go. And then as my day goes on and on and on, I get distracted and it's less, less easy to hear your voice in those little moments. And the, the encouragement that I felt him say was, um, or the idea was set an alarm three times a day. So in the morning, the afternoon and night, that simply my, my simple phrase is Jesus guide my steps to refocus my mind and my attention on him. And even if it's just for a moment, even if it's just for a second, uh, but I think it's really easy for us to get so distracted with our day that we lose sight of of him guiding us through. Yeah, I, I wanna hear from you, but I, I have something really similar. Yeah, go. Um, what I've started to do is every, I, you know, how many times do we touch our phone every day? And so I was thinking through a reminder, how could I, how could, what, 
what is there that I could use as a reminder to connect with God just on just a mo just to remember he's with me. And it was every time I want to open my phone, I I remember to stop. And the phrase that I've I've been thinking about is looking at God, looking at me, love. And it doesn't stop me necessarily from looking at my phone, but it reminds me yeah. to look at look, look at God. And I've really found that to be helpful. Yeah. Um, something that even over the past few months has like been more of my practice is growing up. My, my mother would be like, hey, when we wake up in the morning, you know, good morning, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. There's this like awareness that God is there. And so as like childlike as that is, I will wake up, you know, in the morning oh, next to that. Victor and I'll just look at the ceiling. I'll be like, good morning, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I'm here like with you. And there's that just that. Is this out loud? And yes. I love I it. Out loud. True story. True story. Yes. I love it. I love it. Um, like a child, because it's like, okay, if I can turn over and say good morning to Victor, like, Lord, you're here, and That's I'm cool. just going to talk to you, and I put on my shoes, and I go first thing, and I go for a walk with the Lord every morning. And that moment of connection and awareness, you know, shifts my shifts my day. So then no matter what else comes in, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I, I've started my day connecting with the one person that can um, give me insight for what I'm going to walk through, that can um, meet me in my emotions yep. that are going to yep. come. And he's already been invited into it. Um, I love what you said about your phone, something that I do um, every month. Um, I subscribe to something that does like prophetic declarations for every month. And I, I have fun and I make it into a, a graphic wallpaper mm -hmm. and I put it on my phone. Nice. So every time I look at my phone, there are like things that I am declaring over myself and my life for that month. And it is crazy to see how those things, God brings those things to pass. It may be in terms of my identity. It may be in terms of something I'm going through, but that keeps me, you know, yeah. connected and grounded in that way. Um, I was thinking about, you know, we were talking about like what competes I think it's really input versus output. It's like we have all this input. Yeah. You know, you were talking about social media and, you know, especially for as women, what are you supposed yeah. to look like? Oh, better not get old. Oh, yeah. better have the newest thing. Like, you know, um, and the hairstyles and all this stuff, you know, there's <laughs> bangs are in, the again. Bangs are in <laughs> which, you know, hey, I'm going to be in style for the next like 40 years. Um, how intentional am I to be in God's word so that I have hidden the promise of who he says I am in my heart. So when I'm confronted with those emotions, I can declare that in a moment of anxiety, I can say, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. I know who, what, what my identity is. I know how God's equipped me. So how much are we hiding his word in our heart? so that a renewal of our mind takes place so that when we're inundated, we can actually come back yeah. with something that's meaningful. Thanks for listening and watching to Not Just Sunday. Make sure that you like and subscribe and experience God every day.